we go. In three, two, one. Welcome back to the Come Book Bullies with Nerd is a New Bully. I'm your host, Leroy, with my co-host. This is Eli. Yep, and we're back with another episode, and it is the first day of October. Woohoo. Yeah, so we Autumn are, is upon us. Uh, October is upon us. Halloween season is upon us. This is, Eli, this is your time. It is my time. Right. <laughs> my, my blood is way too thick for the summer heat, so I love when it starts cooling off and I could put, I finally wore some pants today. Not that I, I meant meaning that I was been wearing shorts. For, right. For I mean, you've been walking program. around like Dr. Manhattan the whole time? Or? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just got, just got my ball, my just blue ball it, swinging let, loose. Let yeah. Just letting it swing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's another dick episode. And we <laughs> said we were done with all our dick episodes. I mean, dick jokes, but we had one more. Uh, we're going through withdrawals. Yeah. So. yeah. It's funny because we had one dick joke left on, left on the table. I didn't mean to say it that way, but. <laughs> But anyway, uh, that we didn't get it saved because the internet have officially named Batman's dick. Oh yeah, what is it called? Lil Wayne. Bat- oh, Lil Wayne. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> that's clever. Hey, you got to give Twitter some credit sometimes. So yeah, but like I said, <laughs> we are in the middle of October, and um, yeah, and Eli, we, this is Halloween season. I mean, like I said, this is where we start talking about horror movies and what's your favorite horror movie and your scary movie and. Venom is next week, you know, starting yeah. kicking off the horror season, technically kind of, you know, but yeah. it's here, you know. It is. Yeah, so, I, you know, you got to get our, we got to start thinking about Halloween uh, parties, you know, we got to start thinking of our costumes, stuff like that. Eli, have you, have you thought that far when you dressing up for Halloween this year? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, hard, it's hard because I'm short and not superhero-like, so I got to choose my, my costumes carefully. Because, you know, I'd love to be Batman, but then I'd be short, fat man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to be him, you know. So I tend to just, I tend to just get monster masks. Like, I, like a were- I've had a werewolf mask that I just put on every time trick-or-treaters come hey, over. That, that works. So, hey. I mean, it would scare the shit out of people, but yeah, it works. You yeah. Know? yeah, so I'm almost like a werewolf or some kind of skull mask every, every year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because honestly, I never dress up for Halloween at all. I honestly don't even acknowledge Halloween. I'm, I feel like I'm too old for that shit. I don't go to Halloween parties stuff like that. But Eli, I feel like I'm gonna do it this year. I feel like I'm gonna oh, do yeah? it. Yeah. What so, you gonna dress up as? All right. Of course, let this say I'm gonna dress up as Black Panther. Oh, I've already. Not, I, I was not, thinking, not Mbaku. You wouldn't dress up as Mbaku. I thought about <laughs> it, and I was like, I don't know. It depends on what weight class I'm in at that time. You know, right now I'm probably gonna be Forrest Whitaker. You know, <laughs> but hopefully I get it time by the time this uh Black Panther outfit comes in from Amazon. You know, so you can, you can't rock the uh the, the Killmonger bod with all no, the piercing. No, no, that's that's a little bit above my weight class. <laughs> all the scarification on the pecs. And yeah, shit. can't do Killmonger. You know, <laughs> I don't have enough time on the calendar to do <laughs> to get a Killmonger shape. So nah, that's that's out of the question. I'm trying to be realistic. <laughs> So we'll see. It's either, depending on the shape, it's going to be either Forrest Whitaker, M'Baku, or Black Panther, one of those others. <laughs> we will see October 31st. It will be interesting. Uh, one more thing, Eli, our, our podcast, like I said, we're starting to getting some some traction now, you know, and listening. Yeah, I hear, yeah. Yeah. Get so Notifications on my phone. Yeah, notifications yeah. on the phone. People starting to, you know, curse us out more and stuff like that. You guys don't know shit. You know, and I'm like, oh, we're getting noticed. Oh, you know? yeah, people. People are listening to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people are actually oh. getting triggered, so that means we're doing yeah. something, you know. Yeah. So to all to all our haters that that bitch about us, welcome. Right. Thank you, you know, for listening. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the clicks. Yeah. <laughs> the reason I'm bringing that up because I actually start looking at our iTunes, you know, notifications stuff like that, and we actually start to get a recommendation, you know, by iTunes. Have you seen it, Eli? I I, I don't really do I, I I don't have Apple or any of that shit. So. Oh. Man, you, you got to get into the 21st century. Apple I know, man. I'm, I'm not a 13 year old girl. I'm sorry. Just saying, so. They came out with a new update, killed my phone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I saw a notification and I saw like requests of other podcasts that, you know, if you like comic book bill- bullies, then you should check out this comic, this podcast related to it. And the podcast that related to us, Eli, was Joe Rogan. Oh, no shit. I don't, so- I don't see how we relate to joe rogan that's not my only thing uh maybe because we're dudes <laughs> i guess but it's like we're like on the opposite end spectrum like i don't see anybody listening to joe rogan would see us as a recommendation like oh i'm gonna go listen to these guys like i don't see that you know like he has a very specific fan base that i think would probably shit on us yeah know. he he's got he's he kind of 
he covers a wide spectrum of topics. Yeah, like uh, wrestling stuff like that. I mean, he, he's a he's a wide ranging dude. Like he used to be an MMA or an MMA announcer or something like that. You know. Yeah, he's a comedian, so he has a lot of comedians on his show. I, I'll I'll listen to one of his podcasts. From no, time he has a great They're podcast. Like, wow. I'm, I'm not saying he has a bad podcast. Look, yeah. if you listen to this. You will probably like Joe Rogan. <laughs> so go yeah, to Joe probably. Rogan. Yeah, yeah. You want to hear dudes talking shit, <laughs> which yeah, is what we do. Yeah, we, okay, so we do. We, I guess so we're the yeah. the nerd version of Joe Rogan. Yeah, we're based. Ba- <laughs> I guess. Thanks, iTunes. Okay. Yeah, if, if we're pissing people off, you know, we're yeah, we're probably. <laughs> okay, damn, that's a. <laughs> I never thought about it that way, but I guess iTunes know more than us, so. Yeah, so to all our listeners, we will do our best to continue pissing you off. <laughs> yes, we have done so so far. So. <laughs> all right, now can we get into the podcast? Sure. Cool, let's get right into it. We're going to talk about the box office numbers, what we always do at the beginning of the podcast. And Eli, hit it with me. What is number one? Because I know you will not get this one. Is it the house with the clock in its walls again? It is not. Oh, damn. Well, then, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. I just saw I just saw on YouTube number one movie in America House of the Clock. They lied to me. YouTube lied to me. What the fuck? They do that. Social <laughs> media will lie to you. So, damn it. Okay. So, uh, the number one what we have is Night School. Oh, is that Kevin Hart? Yeah. Okay. Which you should All have right. expected that. It, Kevin Hart movies always hit number one. I've never seen any of them, but they always hit number one. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I haven't either. <laughs> Somebody's watching them. I, not me. <laughs> I think the only Kevin Hart movie I seen was uh, fuck, Forty Year Old Virgin. That is about the only one like I can think. Now I did I, honestly. I think the first Kevin Hart starring movie I saw in the theaters was Jumanji Two. Well, that's right. He was in that. He was I haven't seen that yet. I've funny movie. Seen. Funny movie. Jack Black steals the movie. One of these days, I, I'll probably check it out. Yeah. The movie did like a billion dollars. I hear. <laughs> okay, so uh, number two is Smallfoot. I have no idea what that movie is about. Smallfoot. Oh, that's that. It's a cartoon, isn't it? Is it? About Bigfoot or something? It's about Bigfoot. It's about a, a little Bigfoot, I guess. Why did they just do Bigfoot? That won't make yeah. sense. Well, it's a little, it's like big, a, a kid Bigfoot who doesn't have big enough feet, hence Smallfoot. Or a little Bigfoot. I mean, so, it, yeah. It's a brand of stuff, man. I don't know what the <laughs> hell a Smallfoot is. Uh, okay, number three is your movie, The House with the Clock in Its Walls. Okay. The Eli were almost hanging in there. Uh, number four is A Simple Favor. Psh, don't know what, what that was is. that again? Oh yeah, the the hot white girl movie. Um, oh yeah, you keep telling me about this. Yeah, I don't I don't know what it's about. I just know there's some hot white chicks in it. Or <laughs> uh, number five, The Nun, still hanging in there. Wow, that's yeah. doing well. Yeah. Number six, Hellfest. Oh, that's a, the new horror. That's a new horror flick. Okay. Teeny bopper horror flick. Yeah. Yeah, always more coming out. Uh, number seven, Crazy Rich Asian, which is making crazy rich money. Yeah. Uh, number eight, The Predator. Wow. Wow, that's 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 done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two number, weeks already. Right. Yeah, yeah, two weeks and it's already down. So, uh, number nine, White Boy Rick, still hanging in there, and number ten is Peppermint. So, yeah. Oh. Well, good for that. So that's the box office numbers. In other words, no one gives a shit about any of those movies right now. But next week, we will. Because oh, yeah. for those that yeah, don't know true. and pretend like this movie doesn't exist anymore, uh, num- next week will be Venom. Good, yeah. bad, who cares? You're going to see it anyway. It's got Venom in it. <laughs> it's got Venom in it. That's it. They already Marvel already has your Sony, whoever's making the fuck this movie, they already have your money. So mm-hmm. go see it just so you can bitch about it afterwards because that's what oh, yeah. we do. We we probably will be bitching. <laughs> we probably will be bitching. We're probably going to have this in a whole episode of just uh, shitting on this movie and it's going to be glorious because <laughs> wow, who doesn't like hearing that? <laughs> <laughs> just being triggered the entire time. So yeah. yeah, moving past that, like I said, we actually talk about uh, some other stuff. We can, You know what, Eli, before we get into the uh, actual other podcast, it was... Okay, some interesting stuff. Now, I didn't write these notes down, and I should have. Okay, very important. Movie date is December 21st, 2018. Really? Yeah, that's... Another what... another Star Wars movie? Woohoo! Not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Not on that date. Uh, because, like I said, we have... Actually, it was like a shitload of movies that was gonna drop that date. It was gonna be Aquaman. That's right, Aquaman. Yep. Uh, uh, Bumblebee. Uh, okay, yeah, Bumblebee. Uh, Battlefield Alita. That what what Dark I heard, uh, that, that that's that anime Robert Rodriguez James Cameron uh, anime it's an anime 
I that guess. used to be a man anime. Now it's a live action version of the anime. I guess. We never talked about movie. Let's talk about that movie for a second. Okay. Even though I know I had another point, but we're moving on to this point. Now, it's an anime, right? It was, yeah. Okay. There are no Asian people in the movie, right? I don't believe so. So why is there no outrage like it was with Scarlett Johansson with Ghost in the Shell? Maybe because the main character's a robot and not real. <laughs> Wasn't that the same thing with Ghost in the Shell? Well, it w- but she was played by Scarlett Johansson. This main character is actually a mocap. So she's like an artificial. So she's like an avatar. I, you know? I get your point, but still, it's. I don't know. I, or maybe because Robert Rodriguez is Mexican and he gets a pass? I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it's just weird. It's like people get mad at some shit but don't get mad at other shit. That's the shit that I yeah. don't understand. Well, like Scarlett Johansson was Scarlett Johansson in the movie playing a, a, a Japanese chick. Where this is, this is just – she's supposed to be a robot. And she's not a real – I mean she's a mocap CGI character. Right. So you, Okay, I got it. So you can't say yeah. it's a white girl playing her because it's not yeah. even a girl. It's a robot, yeah. It's, a it's robot, just a robot so that look with big giant anime eyes. Yeah, it actually looks really close. Yeah, CGI character. Yeah, though. actually looks really close to the actual character from the comics or the or the anime. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, I guess we get a pass on that. Okay, I'm yeah. glad you cleared it up for me because I was always wondering like why are we outraged over this but not outraged over that but whatever. <laughs> uh, what else was I talking about? Okay, we got all those movies. Uh, we also had it was another movie that was there. Shitload of movies, but I forgot about it anyway. That battlefield, whatever. Movie anime you, you just talked about, they moved that Battle Battle Angel, yeah. That movie, yeah. <laughs> Battlefront, whatever. Okay, so they moved that so it's not on in December, but they replaced it with another movie. Oh yeah? Yeah. And this the weirdest fucking thing. Deadpool oh, two. That that's right. I heard about this. Yeah. But it's the PG thirteen version of Deadpool Two. Yeah. So I heard about this. I'm like, why is this a thing? I heard, yeah, I, me too. I was like, why are they doing that? But then I heard that Ryan Reynolds is actually really for it. So I'm wondering if it's going to be a different, if they filmed additional things, like if, if Deadpool is going to come in and say some shit, okay, you can't see this or, you know what I mean? I'm wondering if they actually film additional things to make it right. PG. Or instead of just, just cranking out, just, just re-release yeah. just to make more money, you know? Yeah, just to, just to cut out scenes. I'm sure they're cut out scenes, but... I wonder if Deadpool's gonna cut it out or something, like how he did the Honest Trailer. You know, True, because he he, he was involved with that also. So. Yeah, so that that could be interesting. I don't know if I'll see it again, but unless I'm I hear that, I'm case. gonna see it again. I'm, fuck it, I'm going again to see it. I'm because I'm curious, you know. Yeah. Well, tell me if if it's anything different, and I'll go see. It. I will say this: if Deadpool two PG thirteen outgrosses Aquaman, just DC just hang it up, just <laughs> just throw in the towel. It's done. <laughs> oh no the chicks chicks are in the bag for that movie <laughs> well, that's true because Jason Momoa is shirtless and stuff like that so yeah. my thing is I, I think Eli because they re-releasing this I think that's a Disney mandate I think yeah. Disney is testing the waters yeah they're gonna because, see you know if, everybody yeah. keep making this thing like oh you can't make a dead PG-13 Deadpool it wouldn't work it wouldn't work and now if this movie makes money DC uh, Disney will be like all right Told you so. Mm-hmm. You know, so when they decide to make a PG thirteen Deadpool three, people can't say shit because Deadpool two made so much money. Yeah. And so I yeah. don't know. Meanwhile, meanwhile, New Mutants and Dark Phoenix keeps getting and Gambit for some reason keeps getting <laughs> that game will never happen. I'm calling it right now. That game move will never happen. Yeah, no they shit. They keep Why? saying this shit. It's this, this, and it's that. It's not gonna happen. Who who would want to see that? A romantic comedy of Gambit with T- Channing Tatum. I fucked his name all the way up, but whatever. That guy. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that shit. <laughs> Can him chafe him? <laughs> <laughs> Chafing something? I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so that being said, there's a whole bunch of shit going on uh, December 21st. It's really boiled down to Bumblebee versus Aquaman. Who's going to win? I think they're both going to cannibalize each other's box office and both probably going to flop, but uh, who knows? It's December. Everybody watching movies around the time anyway, so... That being said, we actually talk about the other tra- the I guess the one trailer that dropped that I guess didn't really break the internet or even trended. It, I mean, even Captain Marvel trended. People paid this Captain Marvel. This trailer, people gave no shits about, and it's a uh, Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I forgot it came out until you said 
we were going to talk about it. I, I forgot oh, yeah. it came out to look at the notes. I was like, oh, yeah, that it came. This wasn't even a case like Captain Marvel. It came out like six months ago. I mean, six weeks ago. Six days ago. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> Same whatever shit. Came out. Yeah, it came out. In internet years. Ago. In yeah, internet yeah. years, it's a in lifetime. Right, in dog years, you know. <laughs> Did, uh, Dark Phoenix came out, what, like two days ago? Yeah, just the other day. And we forgot just that quick. Yeah. And so, <laughs> it's honestly, it feels like Disney gives no shits about this movie. Because, yeah. and I'm going to say, that, I'm going to go on record. I was wrong. You would never hear me say that because I'm usually not. <laughs> but this time I will say I was wrong because I honestly thought this movie would never see the light of day. I thought yeah. as soon as Disney bought this franchise, they were just going to just mothball this movie, just throw it in the shelves or something like that, or maybe release it on their, you know, their Disney streaming device that comes out next year and just forget this movie ever existed, you know. But they're actually planning on releasing this movie. Why? I have no fucking idea. Because I'm watching this trailer and I'm just like, oh wow, this movie seems like a remake of The Last Stand. I guess, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I mean, I like the cat. Like, I liked. Well, I liked Fast Bender as Magneto. I didn't mind. Yeah, I like McAvoy as, you know, Xavier. I like some of the, the casting in it. Um, yeah. But other than that, really. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, like I said, I'm not a. Was never a big X Men fan. Um, don't care about Dark Phoenix. <laughs> oh man, Dark Phoenix like one of the greatest uh, storylines that ever graced a comic book. Yeah, I know, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's blasphemy. Oh um, man, I, I just, I just, yeah, I'm just not. Was never. I mean, I've said this before. I was never a huge X Men fan, so I, I, you know, I'm just like whatever. You know, I watched the trailer and I'm like, eh, okay. Well, I'm uh, just saying, like, that's a very unpopular. That is a very unpopular opinion because, like I said, X Men. You know me, I grew up reading X Men. Yeah, like it was a lot X- of people, did, right? Yeah. It was, I, I, I drank that shit. I bled. I vape that shit. It's just yeah. X Men. That's it. You know, X Men were huge back in the day. Like they were that 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 was the the that was they were all over the place. They had and the they cartoons. Did. Oh, and the comic books. They had like fucking twelve comic books. X this, X that. This guy yeah. had a solo series. That guy had a solo series. Everybody got books going on. Always a yearly X Men thing going on. It's, it's something like the Marvel Universe forgot everybody else exists, like the Avengers and fans. So like, fuck that. It's uh, X Men. It's all about X Men. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't and, get and, into it. Um, well, I'm just saying the Dark Phoenix Saga is still one of the greatest storylines I've ever read. Watching this movie, this movie is nothing like that storyline. In the comics, which I isn't expected. isn't the Dark Phoenix storyline like three issues or something? Oh no, that shit was like three years. Oh, was it? Yeah, okay. that shit was long as fuck. Which they they can't they can't make a movie of that because the shit was just it took it took too long to tell the story. There is a Phoenix saga, and then there's a Dark Phoenix saga, and then there's some in between shit in the middle. How she went from Phoenix to Dark Phoenix, and I'm not I am not going to get into that shit right now. <laughs> that will be that's a podcast to itself there's two podcasts to itself. i'm not gonna go there so this is not that this is some bullshit where they're just retelling the last stand over again how charles xavier you know uh suppressed her memories and shit she find out she goes evil magneto tries to kill her again it's the same fucking story they, yeah. uh, they say they may go into space because they, here's the thing the x-men used to go into space in the comics all the time they went to space more than the avengers did in the movies, they haven't gone into space not one fucking time. All they did was fight Magneto and aliens. That's all they ever did. Mm-hmm. And so, but this isn't that. They even show Magneto is hanging out in Genosha, but it's just like a, a farm. It's not like some, you know, out, ostracized, you know, African country island or anything like that. Surrounded by sentinels. Shit. Yeah, none of that. It's just, he's just on a farm. And it's called Genosha. Like, what the fuck is this, man? Don't give me this shit. So um, I just figured that Marvel with well, Disney was just putting this shit out so they can say they put it out and afterwards just fire everybody, start from scratch again and just rebuild the X-Men and throw them in the MCU some kind of way. So we just all want to just get through this movie. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I was more interested in New Mutants just because it was supposed to be a horror movie. You know? Supposedly. But, supposedly. But now... And it's just something different, you know. We haven't really seen a, a horror movie 
comic book movie yet, like a superhero movie right. from a horror angle. Right. I mean, you know, we were hoping that's what Venom was going to be, but we don't, we'll see. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> Whatever you think Venom is going to be, it's not. Yeah. So, and another thing about this movie that they keep redoing the same storyline over and over and over again in these movies. So yeah. Magneto is good, then he goes bad, then Charles gives a speech, then he's good again. They did that shit for the last three movies. The same shit. Now he's going to do it again? I'm so fucking sick of this shit, man. Then, for some reason, why is Mystique the star of these movies? She's not even a fucking X-Man. <laughs> we know why, man. I mean, I'm saying this but because I'm, I'm, I'm asking a rhetor rhetorical question. But we know why. Because Jennifer Lawrence became this huge star and she requested more screen time. And it just gave her all the fucking screen time and the character. Nobody even gave a fuck about just because of Hunger Games. And it ruined these fucking movies. Mm -hmm. so, cool when it happened, but... I don't know. And the funny thing about it, I, I thought this was just gonna be a they was gonna be a dumping ground movie because this is actually one of those Fox things that they push back also because the movie was supposed to be released on Valentine's Day next year. So yeah, because that's the Valentine's movie you want to take somebody to see. Another <laughs> shitty X Men movie, you know. But they actually pushed it back. They pushed it back to June for some reason. Now June is in the middle of summer blockbuster season. Why the fuck would they put this movie in June? Who knows, man? Who, who, I, I don't know. Do you think, Eli, and I'm just throwing this out there, I don't know for sure, do you think maybe Marvel might be throwing some reshoots in to do some MCU nines or something? That could be, that could be, uh, maybe, maybe. I don't know if it would, what the fuck they're gonna do. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Just like Thanos kind of waves at them while they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're in space, and you know they go yeah. into there and they just see Thanos' ship, and he just, hey, yeah. look, there's Float Thanos. He's floating by on his rock, just chilling or something. <laughs> right, just sitting in a chair or some shit. You know, like who knows? You know. <laughs> so that would be some weird shit. I don't know. It's just wishful thinking on my part that none of that shit will probably ever happen. Um, hell, who knows? By the time June gets here, they probably cancel the movie. Then, oh, we can push it back some more <laughs> until everybody just figures about the movie. So yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Can we move past that? Sure. Yeah, I got nothing else to say about that. Oh, Dark Phoenix or any of the other shit. What's the other shit that happened to this week? Oh, well, fuck, I can't remember. Uh, let's move to the video game section. Sure. Okay. Video game section, first thing I want to talk about, uh, something we never talk about is Fortnite. Now. Yeah, we never talk about that. We never talk about it because I don't know shit about Fortnite. I just know kids are, it, it's crack to kids. That's all I know, you know. Uh, but the main reason I want to talk about Fortnite is because PlayStation has finally made Fortnite cross-play compatible. So now Fortnite is the very first game to be cross-compatible over all platforms. No matter what system you play on, you can play it with somebody else. Xbox, iPhone, Nintendo Switch, Android, doesn't matter. You can play it with that person, which is a, a big thing. This is a major deal. Because that mm -hmm. means if, if Fortnite can do that and it can open up the floodgates, then it means that maybe it will open the doors to other games being cross click compatible. Now, if you got a Call of Duty game over PlayStation, they got a Call of Duty game over Xbox, maybe that will open the doors to make those games cross play better because you can play with your friends. So now I'm not playing Street Fighter and all my Xbox friends talk shit saying I can't whoop their ass if they make it cross click compatible. Now I can find them and show them okay. that they're not shit, you know. So hopefully <laughs> we can get there. <laughs> this is opening the doors so are you gonna start playing fortnite because didn't you like play it and that it sucked yeah i played i'm like what the fuck is this shit man this this shit everybody addicted to so i, I deleted that shit from my hard drive and that was just last i looked at it uh turn on the news the next day the shit hit a billion dollars like the fuck you know so mm -hmm. this game is going crazy uh they're saying uh couples are getting divorced over this shit they're saying kids are getting addicted to it over crack uh, they're saying they might make two billion dollars next now, year. Is this the game that like parents are like having kids get coached or some shit? Oh yeah, yeah. The re reason they're getting coached. Oh, you know what? That actually ties into the shit we were going to talk about last week, but I didn't think it was interesting. But we can talk about it now. They're getting coached. Reason because Fortnite is by far the highest stream game on Twitch. You know, so it's like not even close. So if you want to get famous, you want to be on Twitch. You got to learn how to play Fortnite. And if you learn to play Fortnite, you'll get all the uh, people watching you and play stuff like that. Matter of fact, the leading stream, the like the number one Fortnite streamer in the world who gets the most views, stuff like that, he just made the cover ESPN. 
you know, his name is Ninja or some shit like that. Huge. He has like guest star shit like that. Like Drake was was over his house one time streaming Fortnite with him, you know, because the guy is so huge, stuff like that. He makes a million dollars a year and stuff like that. He said he plays the game every day, learning tricks stuff like that. So it's big money in this shit. I don't see it. Like I said, I stream, but I don't touch that shit. But you like it, whatever. So, yay, Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If you can't listen to Fortnite, we don't know shit about that, you know. And so, But the, here's the news that I do want to talk about. Pass, fuck Fortnite. We took past that. This other shit we're talking about. And, Eli, have you heard about Bowset? No. Okay. You see the picture, right? The one you sent me? No, the one we're looking at right now on the on the screen. Oh. Oh, you're not looking? Oh, oh, damn, I, you. oh the, is, you mean the what's her face? The cho- the cosplayer chick? Yeah. That's who that is? Yeah, kinda. Not really. I'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I don't I just saw I was I thought that was for Halloween or something. Oh no, no. She just does this whatever she feels like it. <laughs> and so basically here's what Bowset is. Okay. Bowset came and it's 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 like a virus that is spread over the internet. It's it's gone viral. You know over everything basically how it started in there was a new super mario brothers game now eli you're familiar with super mario right super mario uh, yes. okay yes, and you know how mario gets all the power stuff like that and he gets a mushroom and grows big and blah 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 gets a frog suit and whatever mm-hmm. okay so they got a new super mario brothers game coming out and they got all these other characters going to like you know one of the little toads and stuff like that and they got this girl toad and there's another power where she can get this called that's called a super crown so when she gets the super crown this girl tur- toad turns into like a a real girl you know like peach and whatever like that so she turns like a real female girl and she gets bigger and she can jump higher stuff like that and whatever you know so that's the power up well the internet took that shit and ran with it so somebody made a cartoon like a little comic strip where you know princess toes to like the princess that mario's always trying to rescue so like that like he's trying to marry her and she's like nah i don't want anything to do with you so he turns around and sees bowser you know the boss of the game the big giant king koopa turtle oh yeah he he's he taps mario on the shoulder and he like guess what we don't need her and he holds up the super crown and mario like oh okay cool so bowser puts on the super crown and turns into a lizard version of him but the thing is not a lizard version it's this blonde haired big titty supermodel looking chick you know with spike gloves on stuff like that she gets all hot and shit like that and mario and bowser just runs off in the sunset and forgets about peach that's the cartoon. So okay. they have taken this meme and it has gone fucking viral with every so. So they're just thinking that. So they, there's all kind of crazy fan art on. Like you see it right there with the cosplay. It's all kind of fan yeah. art. Of people just. So that's, thinking, that's what's her face? Uh, what's her name? Jessica Negri or something? Something. Negri every, something? Every, every, every yeah. cam girl cosplayer is out there dressing up like this chick right now. There's all kind of weird fan art online right now. <laughs> So it's shit. Bowser, but a female Bowser. Bowser, but a female Bowser. And some of this shit is like way too far. One of them I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> okay, disclaimer for everybody. This is going to be a raunchy joke anyway. But uh, they I saw one comic strip of Mario hitting Bowser from the back. <laughs> you know, wearing a crown. And then the crown, and then I guess he goes a little too hard and the crown bounces off Bowser's head. And then you see Mario like, oh shit, you know. So obviously Bowser turned back into Bowser or whatever like that while Mario was. Oh, whatever. yeah. Oh, okay. So and it's funny. I hear people saying some weird shit like, uh, oh. Before I get that, I did decide to do a little bit of digging, do a little research for y'all. Decided to do a little research. I decided to go on Pornhub and see exactly <laughs> what the analytics are saying. <laughs> you know? And deep course, research, <laughs> deep research, right? So according to the analytics on Pornhub, what they're saying. <laughs> Is that in a 72 hour period, the searches for Bowset has hit over 500,000 on their website? All right. Yeah. Before then, it didn't exist, but now people are really, really into Bowset. So I didn't go that deep into finding exactly what Bowset stuff is out there like that much. But like I said, the internet has taken something pure like Super Mario Brothers and turned into Rule 34. Just. <laughs> And it's not just Bowser. It doesn't just stop at Bowser. They, they're doing it with everybody. You know, they'll have uh, Kratos from God of War, you know, put a super crown on him, and now he's like a you know, chick with big titties now. Uh, they've done it with Laura <laughs> Croft, you know. She has a super well, crown it, on. And now what's she, she going to turn into? A big buff dude, you know, like oh. swollen shit, you know. Okay. 
I was like, <laughs> like, isn't she already hot? Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So, so now she's a dude now, you know, with big giant lumberjack beard and shit like that, you know, but we're still with the shorts. You know, like, <laughs> I didn't need to see this, you know. <laughs> This so just fuck my head up, man. And then some dude even asked online. I just thought it was funny as shit like that. With all this Bowser fan art, uh, if I don't jack off to it, am I gay? And I'm like, wait, what? And then I start thinking about it. I'm like, well, technically, if you jack off to Bowser art, you are gay. Because it's just Bowser. With a crown or, on his head. or are you into interspecies erotica? Because he's this a turtle. Is, this is the internet. <laughs> Who gives a shit? <laughs> right. <laughs> Cartoon, gotta, comic, yeah, yeah. you don't need much. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. If you, if you misgender something, you're going to get fucking raked through the flames. Right. Remember, we just talked <laughs> Can about... Can I just jerk off? <laughs> right. Remember, we just talked about furries the other day. Yeah. We just found out what that was. And now we see this shit. So yeah, I really didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know. You sent me the link and I just saw like... I thought it was just anime shit, like hot chick. I was like, okay, well, it's obviously some video game shit that Leroy wants to talk about, and that's all I really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and let's be honest, this shit is. Huge I would have did Japan. some research too if I. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I want to just spring this shit on you because I know I, 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 when I see, it, I'm like, he's not gonna click this shit. I already know. <laughs> so I just wait to tell you when you actually saw this shit. So yeah, oh. Um, <laughs> this shit is getting out of hand and honestly it's getting worse no telling what the fuck they're gonna do next next week because this shit is getting insane um we move past that shit sure okay <laughs> so i already know people are gonna research this shit now oh Pornhub, it's on there <laughs> uh now we can actually talk about the comic books uh because like i said the reason we're getting to it so fast is because we got a lot of shit we're gonna review yeah yeah it's got a lot a of big, books that came out so got a big week yeah yeah, so I guess, Eli, I guess I'll go first. Sure. Okay, yeah, we can talk about, uh, we'll talk about uh, Heroes in Crisis, DC Heroes in Crisis, number one. Very yeah. interesting book uh, written by Tom King. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and basically how the book starts off is that the book starts off with um, Booster Gold and I guess North, North, uh, Gordon, Nebraska. He's in this bar, well, not this bar, this diner. He's eating apple pie and stuff like that. And, you know, everybody's looking at him because he was superior and stuff like that. And then in, come walk, in walks in Harley Quinn. Everybody's like, oh, it's another superhero. And, and Booster Gold tells the waitress she's not a superhero. And then the waitress like, oh, shit, are you two going to fight? He's like, oh, yeah, we are. But Harley Quinn just sits down and just orders apple pie also. And she was like, and then the waitress asked her, do you want some pudding on it? Oh, and she went well, like, you know what? I hate pudding. You know, not nah, to the whatever. So they just sit down, Harley Quinn and Booster Cole just having a nice conversation, just talking about just, just shooting debris, stuff like that. Harley Quinn takes a knife she's using with the apple pie, and it starts stabbing the shit out of him. You know, and then <laughs> Booster Gold is trying to fight her off, and they start, he's stabbing the side, grabbing the side, shooting her and stuff. And then Booster Gold, like, I'm tired of this shit, and he takes her, and then he flies straight up in the air, you know, out, out into the skies, you know, to try to stop her from stabbing him. And while that's going on, let's go back to the Trinity. Trinity, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, you all know who they are. They're flying around. And they're headed to that same area of Gordon, Nebraska, to this little small house. And they get there. Superman flies over the little house, and he uses telescopic vision, and he sees a whole bunch of dead superheroes. Um, I remember off the top of my head, it was like Steel, Commander Steel, not Steel. Um, there was some dude named Hot Spot, some other dude named Blue something, Blue Jay, yeah. But the thing is, Superman sees all these dead heroes, and he decides to walk into the house. And he said, nobody's there to greet me. Something's not right here. So he walks in the house, and on the ground, he sees the bodies of Roy Harper and Wally West. Now, not the black Was that Wally? Wally? West. That was yeah. Wally West, that, yes. That was Wally West? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so the Wally West that everybody knows, the one that was in Flashpoint, doing all stuff like that. So he sees their dead bodies. They're dead. He walks around, sees some more dead heroes, stuff like that. He sees some robots in the ground, in the in the corner, you know, dismantled stuff like that. And he sees like a sign that says the puddlers are dead. And then what we find out is that those robots that on the ground, they actually Kryptonian robots that Superman made, you know, to watch over this house and stuff like that. Finally, one day, and, and Superman just sees the stuff, man. He he breaks down, starts crying. You know, he can't take it no more. Uh, Wonder Woman and Batman show up. You know, they see everything that's going on, and 
and Superman's just like, who did this? And Wonder Woman's like, it didn't take much to figure out. Obviously, somebody in this house that was with these other heroes went crazy and killed everybody else. And Batman said, what we thought was going to be hope to save these guys, it turns out it's a, it's a vengeance. We got to find out what's going on. So now we cut back to Harley Quinn and Booster Gold. They're fighting in the sky, stuff like that. And Booster Gold is trying to tell Harley Quinn, if you stab me, we're both going to fall. He said, no, duh. So she stabs them, and they fall. They fall to the river, stuff like that. Hurt, but, you know, they both wake up. And Booster Gold is telling Harley Quinn, he was like, Harley Quinn, why did you do it? Why did you kill everybody in Sanctuary? The Sanctuary was the house that they were t they were just, you know, Superman was just in. And Harley Quinn was like, are you crazy, Booster Gold? I didn't kill anybody. You killed them. So now it's like a murderous deal, but like between those two, both of them were in that same house also. But they made it out the house, and one of them killed everybody in that house. Now, how did they kill all those heroes? Who knows, you know? So, basically, the point of that whole story is that Sanctuary, as we find out later on through an interview with Booster Gold, Sanctuary was this house that heroes with PTSD go to to basically, you know, to recover. Yeah, because they can't go to a regular, you know, hospital or, you know, Arkham Asylum or like that. They go amongst each other. And Superman built these robots to help rehabilitate them, you know, to help them get through their trauma. So, you know, if they with Harley Quinn trying to get over the Joker or if they're like uh, Roy Harper, who's a, you know, recovering drug addict, that's to help them. But they've been killed. Somebody has killed all of them and it's a murder mystery on who did it, you know. So, yeah, that's in the story. Uh, British from Tom King wondering who it goes. It does remind me a whole lot of Infinite Crisis. That's what it reminds me of. No, I said it wrong. Identity Crisis. Identity Crisis is what it reminds me of. Uh, I'm not going to get into Identity Crisis. If you can get your hands on it, listeners, Identity Crisis, honestly, is one of the best comic book stories you're ever going to read. It was insane how good that story was. Very shocking. And if you're waiting for a movie, don't. Because the way that story is written, it will never, ever, ever be adapted into anything. They can't do it. Now, that's all I'm going to say about this story. So, yeah, overall, I, I get the story a four out of five because it was a whole lot of mystery going on. I really didn't figure out what was going on to the end. But I'm interested enough to keep, you know, keep with the story. Yeah, I, I mean, I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, yeah, I... I Fucking Booster Gold and Harley Quinn, they beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> you think Booster Gold should at least be good enough to take out Harley Quinn, but I guess not. I guess he really sucks yeah. that much, so. Yeah, so, I thought. I mean, the art was really good. I thought the art was great. So. Yeah, I never heard of that guy before, but yeah, he, he was awesome. Just like, I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm not a Harley fan, but there's that one panel where Harley's just eating the pie, and I'm like, wow. That would be a poster. I would totally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, even the part when she stabs Booster Gold and then takes the knife uh, with her finger and then starts wiping blood on under her eyes like a like a linebacker yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because I, I don't. It's been a while since they made Harley Quinn that crazy in the comics. You know, they try to make her, yeah. you know, marketable and stuff and try to distance her away from the Joker. But in this one, she was just fucking nuts. Yeah, and it, and it, I thought, and then for the ending, I thought, okay, either there's somebody else or one of these two lost their shit <laughs> right <laughs> you know what i mean so and, no, it's really, I, I, thought and it's, I thought harley lost her shit but really what she's doing she's trying to get revenge because she think booster gold did this shit yeah so, yeah which I made, thought, made I, I thought, it, yeah and i totally thought that was the flash that was dead like that was just that was buried <laughs> no because superman said it would ww he said roy and ww so while it was oh okay yeah. okay yeah. So. see i would not have caught that so. <laughs> well i didn't so <laughs> all right all right i'm gonna give you the hard one. Oh, okay so i'm doing doomsday clock you're doing doomsday clock yeah because i got Ooh. too much other shit on my plate so yeah. all right uh let me crack my knuckles <laughs> <laughs> you're typing away actually doing notes like doing oh yeah i had to take some notes like, okay oh i'm doing doomsday clock okay like you make so, joe rogan proud you actually taking notes so. <laughs> yeah all right um doomsday clock number seven um finally Shit is starting to happen. That's why I want like shit actually <laughs> happened in this book. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, a quick recap. Can I do a quick recap? Go for Holy it. Holy shit. Yeah. A quick recap. Let's see how quick this will be. <laughs> um, a quick recap. Uh, re recrap. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know, um, Doomsday Clock. Um, this is where the Watchmen universe has crossed over into the DC universe. It is uh, basically a direct sequel to the original Watchmen comic. Um, we got Ozymandias. Um, his big secret is out. And that his attempt at saving the world is uh, has been faked and it was all a lie. And now the world is on the brink of World War once again. 
So he basically takes a new version of Rorschach named Reggie and uh, two villains named Mime and Marionette who resemble Joker and Harley. And they had, they've had a son that they had taken away at birth. But Ozymandias says uh, he'll help them find their son if they help him. So they, they, they agree. And they basically um, teleport to the DC universe to look for Dr. Manhattan in hopes that he will help them save the world. Um, they get to the DC universe, which um, is having its own worldly crisis. Uh, there is a mistrust of superheroes. Um, the people believe that the government are manufacturing metahumans to be used as weapons of mass destruction. The Superman theory. Yep, the Superman theory. So other countries are now in an arms race, creating their own enhanced super beings to fight in this uh, oncoming superhero world war. So the Watchmen folks, they they get there. They kind of split up and go on all their separate missions. Um, uh, Ozzy, Ozzy Mandius basically goes meet Lex Luthor, um, tries to a get his help, but then he's attacked by the comedian who is revealed to be still alive and that Dr. Manhattan saved him from death for reasons unknown. Um, comedian almost kills Ozymandias who winds up in the hospital and is guarded by police and is believed to be like a crazed metahuman that just tried to assassinate Lex Luthor. Um, meanwhile, Rorschach Reggie finds Batman and tells him what's up. Batman thinks he's a kook and locks him up in Arkham Asylum. <laughs> and while he's in there, uh, Reggie Rorschach meets up with this chick named Saturn Girl who claims she's a psychic superhero sent from the future to save Superman. Um, she helps him escape and they meet up with this old man named Johnny Thunder who used to be a superhero back in the 30s or 40s or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's looking for a Green Lantern's lantern. So while that's going on, Mime and Marionette go on a killing spree, um, and that gets the attention of Joker, who takes a liking it to them. Um, at some point, Ozzy Mandius escapes from the hospital and meets up with Batman, and they have an argument over who is actually being more proactive about saving the world and who's actually doing real good. Um, Ozzy Mandius makes Batman fall out of the owl ship, and he lands in a riot where everyone is protesting Batman. They beat him up and bring him to the Joker. Um, and the Joker has teamed up with Mime and Marionette, and they go to the secret supervillain's lair led by the Riddler, where they are all planning some shit um, because most of the superheroes are gone because they have lost the public trust. And this is where the Superman conspiracy theory is confirmed that the government actually did manufacture some of the metahumans. Some of those villains that were there claimed that, yes, they were uh, – I can't remember who they were, but that they were – the government did – basically make them um and that yeah, this like gets typhoon it. and some other yeah characters. typhoon and uh somebody else I they think remember. firestorm also yeah um yeah firestorm is yeah um but uh and it basically if that gets out then this can start a war so um then all of a sudden the comedian shows up and just starts shooting up the place uh mime and marriott escape the chaos only later to be tracked down by the comedian who's right about to shoot them, but then the Joker saves them by shocking him with one of his hand buzzers. So now Joker has both Batman and comedian, um, which brings us to issues. Now, did I miss anything? That's about where we are. Nah, you pretty. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm like shit. <laughs> Take more notes. Shit. Yeah, there's a. I mean, yeah, there's a side plots going on with. Black Adam about to invade Israel because yeah, that's the over... main thing actually what the what the supervillains are you know having yeah. their group meeting about they're thinking about defecting to uh conduct you know yeah. Black Adam's place yeah. yeah and joining joining Black Adam so mm -hmm. um, he's basically so that... an asylum to every superhero because he's trying to build his own superhero nation yeah so that's where we are that that brings us to issue number seven now Doctor Manhattan has been changing the course of the DC history. Um, he stops one of the Green Lanterns from becoming a Green Lantern for reasons unknown. Um, Reggie Rorschach and uh, Saturn Girl and Johnny Thunder meet up with Ozzy Mandius on the Owl Ship, where Ozzy Mandius's cat, um, what's his name, Bubastis, 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 yeah, something, yeah. And the cat can track down Doctor Manhattan because he is cloned from the same DNA that the cat got disintegrated by Doc, Doc Manhattan. Um, so there's some sort of energy that the cat is linked to Doc Manhattan's energy somehow. Some science smart person shit reasons. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> they explain it in the back of the book, but yeah, it's yeah, yeah. There's there's all these appendices in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so they teleport to the last location um, that the Manhattan Doctor Manhattan was at, and it just happens to be the Joker's lair where Batman and comedian are being held hostage. Batman escapes. Uh, breaks free from his binds and violence ensues. He fights Mime and Marionette, who are really surprisingly able to hold their own against him. I mean, they give Batman, they kick his ass. That, yeah, that, they, they even chop off like one of his ears on his on his cow. And yeah, like Marionette's like that 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 line that she chokes people and severs people's limbs off. Yeah, that's thing's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so they're fighting. Um, Joker breaks it up, uh, and and because he's really interested in meeting this Doctor Manhattan, and it also turns out that the reason why Doctor Manhattan saved the comedian is because he wanted the comedian to track down Ozymandias' cat, mm-hmm. because the cat can track down Doctor Manhattan. So, um, so finally, they they use Ozymandias uses uh, the cat to summon. Dr. Manhattan, and finally, after a year, we finally see the doc. <laughs> and his dick. <laughs> and his dick. Which they have no problem this week. Yeah, no. <laughs> and it wasn't in the shadows. Right. It was just balls hanging loose. Just, just, just swinging. <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah. So Ozymandias tells him that he needs the Dr. Manhattan's help to save the world. But of course, Doc Manhattan is a dick, you know no pun intended (laughs) and he's like no i'm not going back and the only reason why he's here is because he's doing some sort of experiment on the dc universe won't tell us why but he also reveals that he saved mime and marionette from death because their son is important and that he needs their son for something again we don't know why and it is a reveal that ozzy mandius doesn't have cancer because he said he had cancer to uh persuade uh, Reggie Rorschach into helping him, and um, because Reggie Rorschach blamed Ozzy Mandius for his parents' death in the first Watchmen book, mm-hmm. um, so of course you know Reggie Rorschach throws a shit fit, beats the shit out of Ozzy Mandius, and also beats the shit out of the Joker, and um, in a really cool scene, probably one of my favorite scenes, uh, the Joker you know takes takes some of the blood that's spewing out of his own mouth yeah. and draws a smiley face on Rorschach's <laughs> mask. That, that shit was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, then Rorschach is like, fuck it. Rorschach's dead. He takes off his mask and he's just, uh, plain old Reggie now. Um, but then Dr. Manhattan, he teleports away and he looks into the future and he sees that at some point he fights Superman and a month after that, he doesn't see anything. So either Superman destroys him or Dr. Manhattan destroys everything else. And that's it. That's where we're at. Um, of course, yeah, the side plots with Black Adam invading Israel, about to start this superhero world war is going on. But that's basically it. Um, I got to say, I give this a four out of five because after like, what, a year and like Something seven really issues? Happens, yeah. 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 It seems like the story is like finally starting to take shape and have a direction. Um, questions are answered, but also they're raising some more questions. But I feel like after this issue and the last issue that things are starting to pick up. And it's starting to become the big blockbuster event that we were waiting for. Right. I feel like all <laughs> the pieces are coming together. The pieces that Jeff Johns had yeah. all over the place. We're finally starting to see it now. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit higher, Eli. I'm going to say 4.5. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I mean, the book was yeah. just that good. I mean, like I said, Gary Frank art, art is killing it. You got Batman meeting, you know, Dr. Manhattan for the first time. You know, he pops up. He just say, I know who you are. And then yeah, Joker, I, and Joker's like, will you please put some fucking pants on? <laughs> <laughs> and the way Dr. Manhattan looks at Batman when he's like, I know who you are. And Manhattan's is like, oh, shit. He has like an oh, shit look on his face <laughs> <laughs> because they did like he's they did the button, you know, yep. they did the button series uh, or story arc. So. So Batman does know who he is, and <laughs> and, and plus he read uh, Rorschach or Reggie Rorschach or whoever, you know, manifesto or his diary. So he's yeah. read about, back, him. Yeah. yeah. So he knows all about him. Mm-hmm. And, so, and it's just like the opening scene of Doctor Manhattan narrating, like what he's done through history. And I was like, oh shit! Like it just drew me in right away. I was mm-hmm. like, oh shit! <laughs> so especially like Alan Scott was supposed to become the Green Lantern, but he moved it like six inches. So he couldn't grab the Green Lantern, so he ended up dying in the, in, in the train track, and it fucked up everything. You know, yeah. just that one yeah. little bitty thing. It was like that was, that was pretty cool right there. So, 
and yeah, and like my main beef, you know, for like the first like for four or five issues was like introduce like you have characters from these two universes. Why are you introducing these new characters? I was like, when you already have a bunch of characters. But then I'm like, wow, Mime and Marionette are really turning out to be pretty cool. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm really liking those characters. That's the thing about it. Yeah. Really just making them up, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, so. All right. So, so yeah, I guess, I guess I got the next one. So Yeah, let me take a breather on that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good job. I'm like, shit, I want to give you a round of applause for that one. i like, okay, all those notes you took <laughs> paid off. <laughs> All right, so yeah, the next book I got is uh, Action Comics number three. Of course, you know Superman is in it. The name of the book is uh, the name of the chapter is Invis Invisible Mafia. So basically, how the book starts off, you got one of the uh, employees from the Daily Planet. Her name is Miss Good. Don't know her real name, whatever like that. She goes to this like this seedy bar. She talks to somebody and they say, "Oh, they're in the back." So they open up this little panel. She goes in the back of the bar. So you know what some shit ain't supposed to be going on going down. And she talks to this person, a name Candy, and Candy tells her. Uh, okay, you came for the product, right? Okay, here's the rule. You cannot say his name, and you cannot say the name of the product. If you say either two things, I will dump you in the bottom of uh, Metropolis Harbor. Got it? She's like, okay, cool. So she pulls out the, the product, and it's like this little bitty box. You're like, that box kind of small. Like, oh, don't worry. In this box, size, does, size doesn't matter, you know? So she opens up the box to show her what she's getting, and it turns out it's kryptonite. So and she gives it to her and that's it. So we go back to the Daily Planet. Clark Kent is uh goes goes to his desk in the morning. He sees Jimmy Olsen asleep at his desk. You know he he kicks him out of his desk stuff like that. And he tries to tell him, yeah, I talked to Lois. Lois says hi. J Jimmy's like, wait, you you talked to Lois? You know Lois been missing in this book like since it started. But before he can get into a uh, conversation about that, Clark Kent starts getting dizzy. He starts sweating. He starts getting high. He, he can't see what's going on. And all of a sudden, he passes out. And everybody in Daily Planet, like, oh, oh, shit, Clark Kent is, is passed out. Somebody, you know, get him some water. You know, somebody call the ambulance up like that. And and Clark Kent looks around. He's like, what the hell is going on? And he uses, like, his expert vision while everybody's trying, you know, trying to help him up. And he sees that employee with the kryptonite in her purse. And he, and he pointing, like, the purse, the purse. But while they're doing that, they like, call call the ambulance. Get an ambulance or, or something. We need to get help. And he's like, don't call the ambulance. But then the employee sees Clark Kent, you know, helping out. She's like, you know what? I tell you what. I'll go get the ambulance. Don't worry about it. I'll go call them. And she goes downstairs. And while she when she uh, hits the elevator to go downstairs, she looks back at him, you know. So while she's walking away to get to the ambulance, uh, all of a sudden this rope, comes out of nowhere, this grappling hook comes out of nowhere and snatches the box out of her hand, and it's Batman. <laughs> Batman is sitting there telling her, where'd you get this from? Who gave this to you? I want to know now. You know, he says in a scary Batman voice and shit like that. He's like, I already know who gave it to you. I just want you to say it. He's like, I'm not telling you anything, Batman. He's like, no, I'm Batman, right? You better tell me what the hell I want to know. And she's like, Batman, I did this for a reason. I'm doing an expose on these shitty uh, CD bars that are passing around these these uh exotic weapons like and Batman like oh okay all right and but you know you do know this is a weapon of mass destruction you have in your hand right now and then uh the employee tells him well technically that's a deterrent to a weapon of mass destruction and Batman's like huh you know what you actually got a point so Batman takes the kryptonite and leaves and he's like wait, wait wait you just robbed me like you can't rob me you're like uh yeah I can you're like, uh, well, tell you what, since I'm robbing you, this is better for your story. And Batman just takes off. And she was like, Batman just robbed me. You know, so then you got Batman and Superman going back and forth. And Superman like, so what'd you do with the kryptonite? Uh, hey, don't worry about that. It's safe with me. And then he just flies off. <laughs> and then uh, while that happens, Superman uh, actually finds out the CD bar where they were doing this stuff at. Before he can get his hands on candy, she gets killed by a red cloud. And they were like, what happened to the Red Cloud? Like, we don't know. She just all of a sudden just died. And then he sees the employee of the Daily Planet that was there. So, And she runs scared and runs to Superman's arms. She's like, Superman, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. And why he's not going to say, ma'am, it's going to be okay. But she smiles. But he didn't see it, but she smiles real quick while, she, while she's hugging it. So while they're doing all that, we cut to uh, the Drake Hotel, and we see Lois Lane typing, 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 typing papers. Somebody knocks on the door, and she gets scared she's like that because nobody's supposed to know she's there. So she goes to the door, and she's like, oh, I know it's only a matter of time for you found me. And she opens the door, and it's Lex Luthor standing right there. He was like, Miss Lane, let's have a conversation. And then the book cuts off. So, 
yeah pretty cool story it felt like a, a just a, like a one-off story i feel like bendis because like i said it's brian michael bendis he's finding his groove he's you know and honestly reading books like this i don't know why people hate bendis like this is the type of story that you expect bendis to write for a superman story you know daily playing him doing like everyday stuff like that so i like it yeah i give the book a i give it a four out of five pretty cool story yeah so he's writing a superman story <laughs> yeah, he's writing a Superman story. I mean, I don't know what people were expecting, you know. <laughs> uh, release the Snyder Cut. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, okay. I guess since we're still on DC, I'll do my last DC book. And that is Batman Kings of Fear number two. Okay, cool. So, yeah. This is uh, just a throwback to old classic Batman. Uh, Scarecrow has escaped Arkham Asylum and Batman is out to get him. Um, at uh, the end of the last issue, uh, Scarecrow sprayed Batman with some fear toxin. So this issue picks up uh, Batman's uh, trailing uh, Scarecrow. Um, he, while, while that's going on, while he's, uh, uh, he's dealing with the effects from the fear toxin, he's, uh, he's hallucinating. He's reliving like past trauma. Every major traumatic event in his life is starting to come back and torture his mind. So it gets really war warped and weird um, as Batman has to confront his fears. You see his parents getting killed. You see Jason Todd getting killed. Um, basically, every, uh, every every time he's you know Bane breaking his back, every every sh everything that he's ever had to gone through, he's kind of reliving. Um, while he's tracking down um, Scarecrow, so so uh, he's forced to confront his fears. Um, now, the art is just awesome to look at. It's uh, this old school comic book art. Um, Kelly Jones. Oh yeah, um, that's old school. That's back. Yeah, back fall. Yeah. yeah, that's who's doing the art in this. Um, uh, he uh, giving Batman that spooky goth monster movie vampire look with the long pointy ears and exaggerated shoulders and and the and the pecs and stuff like that long dark shadows and it just adds to the whole classic batman feel and just gives the book like this spooky atmosphere so just in time for halloween you know so nothing new story wise but the art makes this book really fun to read so it's just a cool cl throwback to classic batman so i give it a four out of five it's just a lot of fun oh okay like i said superman and batman back and forth so like that uh, next book I'm gonna review is Extermination Number Three. Right. Uh, like I said, this is the book in the teenage uh, time traveling X Men stuff like that. Anyway, now the book starts off where where it left off last time is that Ahab had attacked the X Mansion and he sent all his hounds in there to attack the X Men stuff like that. And then he revealed that I have hounds everywhere. And then he snaps his finger and Old Man Logan turned into one of his hounds. So the book begins and old man logan is about to kill teenage beast because ahab is controlling him but before he can kill teenage beast adult beast attacks him you know to stop him from doing that and he holds him back he was like hank you know he tells teenage hank run get the hell out of here you know and he tell ahab he was like ahab how the hell did you turn him in the in a hound so fast i know your tricks it takes you months before you could turn somebody into a hound and make them one of your slaves you're like oh yeah i meant to tell you that i can make people a hound instantly now because those two kid x-men and those two kid mutants you saved back in issue one they've been manipulating you x-men the entire time so since they've been manipulating this entire time i can snap my fingers and turn any one of you into a hound just like this so he snaps his finger and nightcrawler turns into a hound who's supposed to be protecting teenage cyclops and Shatterstar turns into a hound who's supposed to be protecting teenage Jean Grey. So they attack both of them. Nightcrawler teleports teenage Cyclops into the deepest ocean in the world. But before he can be crushed just by the water pressure, you know, adult Jean Grey grabs him and, you know, holds him comatose while Nightcrawler teleports out of there and runs to, to Ahab. Shatterstar, on the other hand, is on one of the X Jets on the Blackbird trying to stab Jean Grey. And everybody tries to hold him back, but they can't hold him back. So Cannonball, like, fuck this. Everybody move out the way. He grabs Shatterstar, punches through the a hole, punches a hole in the in the Blackbird Exojet ship, and they just take off with, with Shatterstar. So nobody knows what the hell happened to him. And while that's going on, like I said, Domino and the rest of the X Force are on the Blackbird. They were like, oh well, Cannonball took care of him. But the rest of 
we're gonna find and she talks to gene gray and she like gene teenage gene we're not here to babysit you you read our mind you already know what we're gonna do we're not here to babysit you we're not here to protect you we're gonna find whoever killed cable because cable is you know he lead he's our leader we're gonna find who killed him we're gonna put a bull in his head and then boom boom's like or just explode his head put a ticket to bomb in his head and explode him and war Hawk, war path is like or maybe you know slice his throat from ear to ear and boom was like well basically whoever finds him first you know so domino's basically telling him look we are not the x-men we kill motherfuckers that's what we do we find them we cross them off the map that's it so if you need to be babysit and you need to hide from everything else we just drop you off with the avengers while we go handle our business you know and G teenage green gene gray tells domino okay you done with the baby talk you done with the lecture like yeah for now okay good because you're going the wrong way the guy to kill cable is flying this way i already know where he's at so she used her telepathic time powers with like that to find cable who's just teenage cable who's just hiding out in some base stuff like that they blow up the base and, and they open it up and it's the x-force and gene gray ready to you know square off with them and they see all the other x-men tied up in the back so yeah cool uh i give another four out of five because I, I just find this story interesting it's about to be wrapped up anyway that uh, we know already know they're going to take the teenage x-men off the map so they can get to bring the real x-men back but still an entertaining story nonetheless so yeah this is this is extermination extermination yeah okay cool cool yeah. all right well since we're on marvel i'll do my one marvel book i read and okay. that is punisher number two mm -hmm. okay so this is the second chapter in the World War Frank story arc. And what's been happening is Baron Zemo and uh, Hydra, um, they've taken over this uh, Eastern European country. Um, shit, what is it called again? I forget. Um, anyway, uh, Eastern European country. They're trying to, they, they're basically trying to legitimize their, their, their nation. And they had uh, the Mandarin as their uh, public relations face. And when he was addressing the United Nations uh, last issue, uh, Punisher killed him. Killed him in front of the UN and on live TV. Right. So, of course, everyone is after him now. And this book, this book picks up, uh, basically, Frank is on the run. And he, have to, he has to fight his way through everything. Um, the beginning of the, <laughs> the beginning scene, holy shit, is just classic fucking Punisher. So we got these two, uh, these two Hydra agents. And they're meeting in public in Times Square in New York. And they're discussing these orders that they have just received from uh, Baron Zemo. And uh, Punisher rolls up on the set and just shoots one of them right away. And then grabs one of the guys and he's like, you know, interrogate him. Like, what's, what's, what, are your, or what, are you, what are you guys up to? What are your orders? He's like, I ain't afraid of you. You know? I was like, oh, yeah? And Punisher cuts off his hand. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, now tell me, what, what's going on? And he's like, well, um, basically... Uh, the agent tells him that Zemo has been hiring a bunch of supervillains to kill Frank Castle and that all the Hydra agents are basically told to stand down until Punisher's dead. And, um, you know, you know, and, uh, you know, it's like, you're supposed to wait to what until someone kills you. And he's like, it's going to be a while. And then, uh, the, the, the Hydra agents like, well, cut off one head and two shall take its place. And then Punisher goes, well, let's see if that really happens. And just cuts off his head. <laughs> like in broad daylight, in Times Square, in public. It's like someone's like filming it on their phone and shit. So it goes viral. <laughs> so, um, so, of course, all the cops and superheroes are after Frank. Um, at one point, uh, Nick Fury uh, calls Frank on a cell phone and is like, uh, you know, Frank, you got to turn yourself in. And Frank is like, yeah, no, that's not my style. And Fury's like... Yeah, I was afraid you'd say that. And I got a backup plan. And then Luke Cage and Iron Fist show up. <laughs> and they brawl it out. Um, of course, Frank gets his ass whooped. But he still manages to, you know, shoot up Luke Cage and blow up a car and escapes. Um, it's a pretty cool fight scene. Uh, yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, but then he escapes. Um, and then uh, Daredevil intercepts him. And yeah, Daredevil's like, hey, you got to you gotta stop, man. You know, uh, uh so, you know, the last page is basically uh, um, they hear they're on a train. You know, that's where it's happening. You know, Daredevil meets uh, Frank on a train. He's like, you got to you got to give yourself up. And then they hear a bunch of tunk, tunk, tunk from the from the roof of the train. And they're like, what the hell is that? So the last page is just a bunch of ninjas basically jumping on the train ready to strike. And, uh, you know, uh, Frank, Frank is like, uh, hey, did you bring any backup with you? 
And Daredevil's like, uh, nope, those guys ain't with me. And that's it. To be continued. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, I give this a four out of five. It's still now, a fun now who's, read. Who's writing this? This is that Rosen, Matt Rosenberg. Never heard of him. Okay. Yeah, he's been he's been doing uh, the Punisher for a while. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I like it's still fun. I mean, Frank fighting superheroes is usually not my thing. Um, I think I always thought it was a little cheesy, and I'd, rather, I'd much rather see the gritty street violence that he's known for. But I gotta say, this was a lot of fun. <laughs> Luke Cage and Iron Fist versus the Punisher. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I gotta check that. I'm waiting for it to come to Marvel Unlimited, but I gotta check that out. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just a fun story, so yeah. Okay. All right, uh, last book I'm going to review today is uh, spider Getting Number Zero. Now, like I said, the reason I decided to read this book and pick this book up because on the cover of the book was uh, the Spider-Man from the PS4 game is in this book. So the whole book is pretty much about him, and it's basically him, you know, teaming up with the other Spider-Man. So basically how to get to it, we're in that Spider-Man universe, like the PS4 game. And and keep in mind, if you haven't read this book, beat the game first, because the book gives you all kinds of... The book takes place after the game. So oh, it spoils this shit out of the storyline if you haven't read it. It's, so I mean, if you haven't played or whatever. So, yeah, so basically what happens, the, the, the game starts off... I mean, the, the game, the book, movie, book, story <laughs> the story starts off with spider-man just swinging away just doing whatever he does and like i said in the game when you're swinging uh j jonah jameson has a podcast that, that's talking and he's just shitting on spider-man the entire time you know it's actually pretty interesting like some of the stuff you've seen about uh spider-man you're like damn j. Jonah Jameson actually has a point you know so he's swinging just saying the same shit he's going before he gets a phone call from mary jane mary jane in this universe or in this game uh she works for the daily bugle you know, and she's trying to tell him, you know, don't worry, J. Jonah Jameson, you down. Don't worry about his podcast. It's going to be okay. And while he's doing that, he runs into uh, one of his supervillains that's run out, and it's Tarantula. Now, Tarantula is an old 80s Spider-Man comic book villain. He wasn't in the game, but everybody, every bad guy that was in the game got this cool-ass redesign. You know, just like Spider-Man got a redesign on his suit, all the bad guys got redesigned suits also. So Tarantula had this badass redesign also. They're like... Fuck, why wouldn't he in the game? I want to fight him, you know. So anyway, Spider-Man fights him, and he does the same shit that he was doing in the games, like throwing spider bombs at him and stuff like that, and impact west like that. So it was pretty cool there. While he's fighting this guy, another Spider-Man shows up from another dimension. It's the superior Spider-Man, you know, from our universe. You know, the crazy spider Ock or whatever. And I was about to say, is that Doc Ock? Yeah. Doc Ock, yeah, that one. Yeah. So he tells him, uh, he calls out to him, Spider-Man of 1048. You gotta come with me. I'm the superior Spider-Man of Earth 616. He's like, the hell? You know, because he didn't know any, uh, you know, alternate dimensions or multiverse that even existed. So why are you doing that? Tarantula actually gets, because he got surprised, Tarantula gets the best of him, smack the shit out of him, and he escapes. And Superior Spider-Man tries to tell him, look, we don't have time for Tarantula. I gotta tell you what the hell's going on. The multiverse is in danger. They got these crazy ass a multi-dimensional vampires called the Inheritors that just go around killing Spider-Man and other multiverses. And if you don't listen to me, they're going to come here and kill you, too. So you need to come with me to this base with each other Spider-Man at Ed so we can formulate this plan on how to take these guys down. You're like, well, I can't do that because if I go with you, who's going to protect the city? You know, I, Tarantula's running around here. I got to stop him. And then he's like, before we even do that, or, and he, and you know, Spider-Man of the PlayStation 4 game asks him, are you the Spider-Man? Are you Peter Parker in, in my universe? He was like, oh, no, I'm not Peter Parker. I'm Otto Octavius. And he was like, oh, shit, because you played the game. You would understand why this is a big deal because Otto Octavius, Doc Ock in this game, I'm going to spoil it for you. Spoiler alert. Doc Ock kills Aunt May in this game. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> so I just let you know that. So that's why he starts to freak out and almost fights him when he sees him. He, like, he just gets triggered just even hearing Otto's name. You know, but he was like, no, I'm, I'm actually a good guy in my universe. I know your Dr. Octopus in this universe is fucked up, but I'm actually pretty good. So... He's like, look, don't worry about that. I got to go find uh, Tarantula because I got to beat him first before I go with you. And then he's like, all right, guess what? I'll team up with you. If I help you beat Tarantula, you got to come back with me. He's like, okay, cool. So they go beat Tarantula real quick, you know, because it's two Spider-Man. Tarantula can't handle two Spider-Man. Plus, he's a D-level Spider-Man villain anyway. So Spider-Man's like, okay, before I leave, I got to say goodbyes to people that's there. So he goes talk to Miles Morales because Miles Morales, is, spoiler alert, Miles Morales is in the game and one of the, the – Stinger endings, after credit endings, 
he gets spider powers. So so he talks to Miles Morales. He's like, look, Miles, I got to go to this other dimension with these other spider man If something goes wrong, it's up to you to handle it. You're the man of the house now. That's basically what he tells us like that. And Octopus find out, wait, wait, he got powers? He need to come with us. He's like, no, he's not ready yet. He needs if he comes, he needs to stay here just in case of something happens. Then he after he leaves Miles, he goes talk to Mary Jane, hugs Mary Jane, kisses her, tells her, you know, I'll I'll be back soon. And Octopus tells him, he was like, look, that love you have for Mary Jane, almost every Spider Man has that same love. But they every Spider Man has a Mary Jane in their life, and Mary Jane is pretty much the source of their strength. They're like that's pretty cool. He, he asks Otto, do you have anybody like that? And he's like, nope. <laughs> so then they swing into the to the multiverse and that's the end of the book so i also get this book of four out of five i know we pretty much given every book of four out of five here but it was just an awesome book to me I man mainly it's an awesome book because the game has such an awesome ass story plus the the writer of the game is the writer of the story uh what? his name is is christos gage for any valiant readers which i know none of you are really listening to this podcast <laughs> but if you are <laughs> you know who christos gage is okay He's so pretty. As a matter of fact, I think he even did. I think Eric interviewed him. Oh, really? I think so. Yeah, I think he interviewed him. So, yeah, like I said, awesome story. And honestly, Eli, I'm, I'm just gl- uh, gush about this game for a second because I finally beat the game like about a few days ago. My opinion, it's one of the best Spider-Man stories I've ever witnessed, seen, whatever. Experience. Experience, yeah. <laughs> it's the best Spider-Man movie yet. Okay. In my opinion, I'm I'm just I'm just gushing about the game because the game kind of like follows its own like mythos, but it takes mythos and kind of revamps. Like I said, what I was saying about Doctor Octopus and how he kills Aunt May at the end of the game, and then you know he he's at Aunt May's deathbed, and Aunt May tells him take off your mask. I know who you are. You know the whole time. He like you knew the whole time. He like yeah. They had this heart to heart with Mary Jane, and then the end game. I'm supposed to shut the game. The end game. You know where Uncle Ben's grave is buried, right? The yeah. game ends with Aunt May's grave buried next to him. Oh, so did you cry? You're about to make me cry. No, I, mean, <laughs> I did not cry. I held in my tears, you know. <laughs> but the thing was, because the entire game was that Otto, Dr. O- used the game was Otto Oct- Octavius becoming Dr. Octopus. Beginning the game, he was just your boss. That's it. He was just a boss, and you were a scientist. You was a lab assistant, and you and Spider Man actually helps him become Doctor Octopus because he's trying to work on this project. He can't figure out. Peter, like, what if you do this? What if you do that? What if you do this? So he actually in, helps him invent the technology to become Doctor Octopus. When he gets the technology, then he just ran rampages on the city and just start killing people. So Peter is Fucker. responsible for the whole shit. Well, that's cool. I didn't know. Doc Ock was the main villain because yeah, they they save it at the end. They make it seem like that Mister Negative dude, which is which is he's cool as fuck too, but they save the Doctor Octopus shit for the very end. Oh, you know he didn't become Doctor Octopus until the vi- very last ball scene. Damn, so Doc Ock is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. <laughs> cool ass, cool ass villain too. Look, yeah. I have the whole entire stream on the Comic Book Bullies YouTube channel. Go check it out. I play the whole thing. If anybody wanna look at it, check it out. Boss fight. Whole thing. So yeah. Cool. Uh oh yeah, I get that game a five out of five. <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and rate that shit. I'm, I'm playing that shit again. I'm gonna speed run it too, probably this weekend or something. Oh shoot, Eli, you got anything else? Yeah, I'll do one more. Cool. So um I got Terminator Sector War number two from Dark Horse Comics. Um now this is uh basically um, takes place in um, the same night as the first Terminator movie, only instead of uh, the Terminator that's after Sarah Connor, that's in L.A. This one takes place in New York. So a Terminator sent back from the future to kill this uh, New York police officer named Lucy Castro because her unborn son is important in the future. We don't know why yet, but we suspect he has something to do with the resistance in the future. So um, the first issue is basically set up, and this this next issue is just all action. The, it's just a one long chase. She's still on the run from this uh, T eight. Is it the eight hundred? T eight one hundred or yeah, yeah T T eight hundred. That's honest. Yeah, uh, yes, T eight hundred. Yeah. So she's being chased down through New York, um, hiding, running, shooting, shooting this damn Terminator who just won't stop until she is dead. Um, she hides out in a punk rock club. Uh, fucking Punisher, or the Punisher. The Terminator. 
same thing. <laughs> the Terminator comes and a, like a garbage truck crashes through the club. Big action scene. Um, she keeps running. She goes, ends up in like um, this gangland territory where she is uh, stopped by a bunch of gangbangers who are like, they're like gun runners. And she basically, hey, I need help. I need some place to hide. And they're like, okay, cool. So they take her in. And, ba- and they're in like one of their um, slum apartments, kind of like uh, in the raid. <laughs> like, you know, um, and they're, they're, they got a bunch of guns. So they're, that basic, that's basically where the comic ends. They're just kind of holding up and waiting for the Terminator to show up with a bunch of guns. So I'm really stoked for the next issue because I'm sure it's going to be just all out action. And that's basically all this was. It's just, you know, it's just all action and just a lot of fun. Um, yeah, for fans of the Terminator, I highly recommend it. It's just cool action cyborg shit. Fuck it, I'm going to give it a five out of five. Fuck it. Nice. <laughs> very we, fast we were just pace. just rating yeah. it higher and higher. <laughs> yeah, very fast pace. I mean, this was just a quick read. Like, I read it. I was like, whoa. And I went and read it again. Because it's just so fun. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you, Eli. This week for comics was awesome. Yeah. It was a lot of good shit drop. Yeah, this was a good week. So all you, know? you comics gators out there, what the fuck are you complaining about? <laughs> uh, uh, no rip, West rip, Coast yeah. Avengers number four dropped in no bullshit like that. No, some good ass comics came out. So I'm interested yeah. to see you know, what other people say. Uh, oh, before I get into that, you got any other books? I'm, I'm booked out. I'm I, about I, I, I got, yeah. I, we read a lot of the same shit, too, it looks like. so. Which is cool. Yeah. I mean, we got a yeah. chance to like really talk about it because I, I wanted to read some of this shit and I didn't want to you know, miss out on some good shit, you know. Yeah. So definitely if you if you listen to it this long, definitely like, share, and subscribe. We have our other podcasts. Uh we have our sister podcast, Geek Sav. We have Comic Cast, which gonna re- I know they're gonna review some of the same books we did. So I'm interested to hear their opinion. I, I really want to hear what to say about Heroes of Crisis and Doomsday Clock. Uh comic just geeks and comics. We're gonna do some stuff also. You have Get Valiant, you have Hoodoo TV. Talking bow. That's it. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know foosball. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you listen to it, if you like football, uh, I think that's all of them. And like I said, next week we're going ball to the wall with Venom. We're probably going to do just a, a a Venom episode, depending on how good the movie is or how bad the movie is. One of the other. <laughs> One or the other. Uh, Teen Titans will also be out, but I probably will review that or maybe briefly talk about that just depending on how it is. I don't know. Oh, the but, TV show. Yeah, the TV show. I think, okay. they're, I think they're only going to drop it like one a week. So it's not gonna like next week we just do a dump. It's going to be like once a week. So. Well, that'd be cool anyways because that's the binging shit. Yeah, man. It gets. I, I started watching Iron Fist and I haven't made it through yet. I'm not going to get into Iron Fist. I'll talk about this shit later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that being said, this is Leroy. This is Eli. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Same Venom time, same Venom channel. So, yeah. <laughs> Cut this bad boy off. <laughs>